Hello and how are you? My name is Mohind Mbarak and I'm coming to our 11th lecture of creating a complete inventory management system. We always do 40 minutes, as you can see, our timer has started. So without, without waiting any minute, let's go straight into our today's business. As you can see, I have already opened my project, there it is, and uh, I think it's already running, let me first check. It's already running on our port. If I come here, if I come here and I put our endpoint, you can see our project is already running there. Okay, so where did we stop? <laughs> did you stop so we stopped at the point of uh, updating what updating categories whereby when the stock changes it updates the what this the stock uh, categories uh -huh. so we're going to work to do the same on the stock subcategories when the uh, stock changes it should update the stock subcategories i don't think we did that uh let me see let me see if we did that and then you know sometimes i forget because of many projects so let us see stock item stock item and then uh, we have uh, created updated so we're updating even the stock what the stock subcategory see here update itself and i think i've already created it so i've already back to the logic of updating the stock subcategories we even tested uh when the stock is running out all that stuff we already tested that all right, so uh, with that message, let's go ahead and now see. Okay, let's go ahead and now see. And now proceed from uh, where we stopped at the previous lecture. Uh, right now, we finished these two items. Uh, let us finish the, uh, the designing of the form. And also, I think even the form, we finished it. Let us finish the designing of the table. After finishing the designing of the table, we come to the stock records yeah okay i think stock records where we were <laughs> okay we are here on stock records okay so we finished uh searching okay i think this is where we stopped at exactly at stock records okay so we want to be able to create a stock record and also uh, when you create a stock record you should come and update the stock categories and the stock subcategories that's where we were i think because andre worked on many projects so i forgot this one where i stopped at i think this is where we are at uh, this level we stopped at work and start the stock what the stock um, item and then we display it like this uh, all right so without wasting much time let's go straight into this business okay so right now we're going to work with the we, we are going to proceed from here uh so here we are showing vegetables and uh, what and uh, current value of vegetables but we are not showing whether they are kilograms or they are what uh so let us go ahead and display also the, the the measuring unit okay so i'll go ahead and zoom my video i mean my screen so you can see clearly and then i'll come here to our api and then you come to this api of stock what i mean the stock the end point of stock items so you can see we are sending back the name text but in name text we're not displaying the what in we're not we're sending back the store category SKU and also the category, the store category. We're, not, we're sending back the SKU, okay? And also, these are items, not subcategories, eh? That's just so item. And also the name text. So in the name text, you have to go and add there the weight. So I'll pr press here and then I go to the stock. Uh, to the stock what to the stock item and then you come to where there is name text attribute here uh it would be great if we also add the measuring unit okay so it is stock category okay i was supposed to add this one here like this i think and then the measurement unit okay so now you see we can be able to do what to get the uh the measuring unit when you do like this i see the measuring unit now shows up that's good uh, i think this is the point where i just made a mistake all right, so let's go ahead and add the, the list of categories will be calculated in background. So I'm going to remove it from here. 
let's go ahead and do that so i'll come here to the stock item record i mean the stock record a controller stock record controller and then we shall remove this this one we shall do it in background uh -huh. so let's go ahead stock category we shall also do it in background created by this one you can do it here and hide it so you can put here uh, uh default okay you can put here default and put hidden okay default you put okay let me collapse this one you put here default and then you put the person who is logged in okay so if i come here and refresh i'll see that this is the person who is logged and then creating it so i'll just come here and do hidden so it should not be tempered with okay that's okay the sku this will be created by the by it will be in back end okay the name of the product it also be in the back end okay okay so this is the stock record the name to also be in back end uh the measuring unit is also being back end okay then the description uh this one can be uh, we can let it someone to feed in the description about this particular uh, expense or sell okay and then here we have the type of the record so this type of a record we can say maybe it is uh it expired okay maybe it, maybe it is uh maybe it's because of expiry maybe it is be it is a sale or maybe it is something like that okay so let us put here um uh do what let us put here the reason why the stock is getting out okay so we put here uh the radio or can put here yes radio and then you put here the types the possible types that can lead to the store getting out okay so you can put here um the first one you can say the stock out okay let's go ahead and comment this one all right so type of a record just a minute all right so the type of records of course all of them they are going to be stock out this stock record will be stock out records uh so maybe we can say maybe it is a sale maybe it is a damage maybe it is uh, a return okay it is a sale or it is a damage uh-huh it is a expiry you can put here expiry expiry expired and uh, also maybe others lost others okay so Right. so this one will help us to make statistics and know the reason why the stock are getting out All right, so maybe you can put also maybe internal use. Okay, internal use, sometimes they may use it just within. So I may need to put their internal use and then maybe put here after you put the description, okay? A description like this. And then after you put now the quantity, the quantity brackets uh, in units and then you make it required and also then after i put the what you put the the selling price this one will be calculated from the back end and then the total sales will be calculated from the back end so those are the items that you need to do what to create when you're doing what uh, when you're creating the stock okay so someone will come here and start a particular item for example this one 
and then say it is a sale and then maybe say uh here's some reasons okay some description and then put here maybe uh, the what the quantity and then submit okay so that is what you're going to do right now okay so uh there are, there are things let's go ahead if we submit right now of course we're going to get errors uh because uh there are things that you have to do in background for example uh the stock id of those things you have to do them in background okay so you have to put them in background so i'm going to go in um i'm going to go in a what in uh, In, in the database and fetch these okay and fetch more things that we may need to, to put in a stock record so i'll go to a database okay and then come to stock records and then come here copy these items and then you're going to see which thing that you're going to do what to uh to, to to implement there okay so i'll come to i'll copy this and then come to uh what to our system i mean to our stock record item our stock record here okay so in this stock record let's see a few things that we're going to implement here so i'll just paste here i think that i've just copied in uh, the other side okay so i mean in the table of the stock records okay so i mean the stock record class i mean like i mean model so i'll remove id i don't need id i don't need updated that i don't need um uh category id this one we're going to then we are going to okay let's see a few things that we need uh, company id we can do this one okay so let's go ahead and implement these things uh, so we're going to put here our boot okay so we go ahead and write the boot system i mean the boot methods let me go ahead and remove uh, these things here okay all right Okay, so begin uh, the company ID. So how can you get the company ID? We know when you're submitting this stock, you're submitting the category. Okay, so let us get also the category, the, the category, the subcategory. Sorry, you know you cannot submit this one without getting the subcategory. So we're going to get the subcategory by saying so subcategory, and then you say find, then it's find stock subcategory ID. Okay, so we check if this subcategory is null. If it's got to null, I throw. And here I say invalid what? Invalid subcategory. That is the first level. Uh, then it means that now we can get the company ID by saying model company ID equals to stock subcategory, then company ID. Because the subcategory comes with the company ID. So I remove this one. Uh, another thing that we're going to need here is the stock item ID. Stock item ID. Stock item ID. So I think we need share. this one that we shall need. Okay, stock item. Okay, first week let's go slowly. So stock item ID is the one that we shall need because it is necessary. So you're going to search here stock item because you cannot create a stock record without what without a stock item. So I put here maybe item. I say stock item. Okay, so we go ahead and check. If it's not equal to null, we if it's equal to null, we throw an exception and say the stock item was not found. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do, we're going to now get the what? Uh, the model, I mean the the company ID. So the company ID, it will attach to what? The stock item, of course. Okay. After doing that, the next thing that we're going to check, we're going to check the stock category ID. So stock category ID equals to stock item and then put stock category id okay because uh, because this stock category id is attached to what to this stock item of course okay this stock item comes with stock category id if you still remember if you, if you come to the database you'll find that the stock item it has a category id it has even a what a subcategory id so we can set it from here when you are creating 
the next thing i'm going to do you're going to set the what the stock subcategory id okay so you can set that one also i uh have -huh. so created by this one of course we go from the other side they can leave this one and then sku we can as well get it from here SKU. okay the name of the product so if you want to keep this name fixed we have to save it on this record we can get it from there and then the measuring the measurement unit measuring unit make sure that you're using the same word so here i call it what measurement unit so measuring unit of course this one will have to first get the the what the subcategory of this stock so if you still remember let me see if we go to stock item sorry if you go to stock item it has what you call here subcategory okay so we have to go to subcategory in order to access the what the measuring unit so you should have this relationship there okay so stock subcategory then measuring unit okay then the description of course this one it will be uh generated from the other side so if we can check if uh if uh, description if description equals to what if description equals to null then you can say maybe description is got type okay so you check in case it is null then you equate it to the what to the record type okay like this uh -huh. so uh type it should not be null of course and then the next thing that we're going to do is the quantity this quantity of course we can go ahead and get the quantity here uh from the item here so if you want to make sure that the quantity is in a positive it is in positive you sound with what you call abs so abs will make sure that uh, the whatever integer here is positive you can even check if uh, quantity is less than zero then you can throw an error and say you cannot get a record that is less than what than, than zero so that less, that's less than one okay so it's a invalid record okay so i hope you are together so the selling price of course the selling price you will get it from the what from the stock item okay so selling price of course it should be in what in the stock item here I hope you have selling price okay we have selling price here so we have here the quantity so we can get the selling price the selling price if we get it from where from the stock category okay stock 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 i mean stock item is where we have the selling price and then we have the total sales so the total sales uh we'll get it them from Total sale of this record is equal to the, the selling price times the quantity. Okay, so we'll be able to get the what? The total sales. So you can make sure that you also maybe update the quantity of this item by saying quantity equals to quantity like this. So you can pause the video and see the logic that we have done there. Okay, so here you get the stock item which we are creating the record for, and then here we get the what? The 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 what we get the the uh the, sorry we get the the company we update the company id we update the, the stock category this is an item stock subcategory so this is an item and then we also get the sku we get the name of the what of the category and then we get the measurement unit and then the description all this stuff we get them from here so you can pause the video and look at this very carefully of how i've achieved that okay so now which is okay now we can go ahead and create a, a what a record so i can come here and select the item this one and say maybe five and submit so everything is okay everything is okay only that we have not validated sometimes someone may need to create a uh, record i mean may need to to create uh item that i mean the the, the 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 quantity that is more than the available record okay i mean the available stock so we are going to see how we can uh, solve that problem in a way that if a stock is uh, it has run out 
uh, we should not, I mean, we should, for example, if you have like five kilograms uh, in, in, in your stock, someone should not be able to create like something of 20 kilograms or sales of 50 kilograms, something like this. So let us go ahead and avoid that, okay? So to avoid that, what you're going to do, you're going to say, you're going to say, so here on creating, of course, on creating, we're going to get the, let's, let's get the available quantity. So you can get the available quantity. So we can get the current quantity of course the current quantity is here so each stock has a what has a current quantity here okay so you can get the current quantity current quantity equals to stock item and then you know the stock item it has a current quantity stock item then equals to current quantity so let us go ahead and surround this one with abs also to make sure it is uh, not negative but let's leave it like that maybe you can put here integer to type cast it to make sure that an integer Okay, let's just leave it the way it is because in future I may deal with. Okay, so current quantity. So we check if if uh, the current quantity is less than what is less than uh, the the quantity that someone is trying to create. Then you can say insufficient what we throw an error and say insufficient stock. So this one will help us not to do insufficient things. All right, so that is it. And now after doing that. Now the next thing that we're going to do is uh, to update the stock. Of course, you see here the problem is the problem is after you have created the stock. Okay, here we have used five kilograms. Okay, but if you come here to the if you come here to the what to the stock stock subcategories, you can see the current quantity has not reduced. Okay, so you have to create a logic in a way that um, every time. We create a record it does what it does reduce the current quantity okay so we can do that from here on creating so for now we shall not accept the the okay the updating okay so you can say maybe new new quantity equals to current quantity minus the quantity of stock okay so after then after we do what we go ahead and uh, update the stock quantity current quantity and make it what and make it and save it the stock item and then save it Okay, so you can see that. So you're getting here the new quantity, which is equal to the current quantity minus the quantity that you have sold or that you have laid the stock out. And then you say current quantity equals to new quantity. And then you say quantity, I mean equal, equals to new quantity. The one that after we have subtracted, and then you say new quantity, and then you update the what? The stock item. All right, so. This stock item also has to update the what it has to update uh, the stock subcategory and the stock subcategory also have to has to okay the stock subcategory okay so here we're going to go on um, on the stock item and listen to update okay and listen to updated and then we we update the what the stock category 
so it has got a stock item so this is the quantity of the stock category here i guess you I, I i believe you're getting my point here so this is the point when we are doing what we are reducing the stock quantity okay and then you save so uh let's go now to the stock item and then also update the stock subcategory so let's go to the stock item and then we come here to updated so we're going to listen here to updated okay of course you've already listened to it here i think it's already implemented so again when it is updated it goes ahead and update what the stock category okay the stock subcategory so if we go to the stock subcategory and you see how we update okay so it has got stock subcategory so update self it just gets the what uh the sum it get the sum of what the sum of um of the available stocks and then it update the current quantity i think we already gone through this already only that uh, we need to update here the profit and of course the profit and it's going to be from the sales okay so you can check if it is a sale and then you say maybe profit and okay let's uh go ahead so here in the stock subcategory okay here in stock subcategory also maybe we forgot to do one thing is the i think we've already done it is the what the the active financial year. i think that's what he done uh, so here the profit and okay we, let's come back to this one okay let's first make sure that uh, the what the the quantities are reducing okay for example let's go ahead and come here to stock items let me delete this record so we're having 10 so let's come here to the stock items i mean still subcategories we're having 10 we're having uh oh it has already okay still subcategory here it has already updated it did call it on delete okay stock record okay so it is just on now okay all right so uh, so uh now we are having here i want us to test for example let's go ahead let's come here to stock items oh i've deleted the stock items let me first delete this stock record okay let's go ahead and add a stock a single stock item okay come here to stock item let's add one stock item maybe we can put it this ice cream and then we can say test ice cream okay all right so after we say maybe it should be automatic and then you can put here maybe uh, the buying price maybe it's 100 the selling price maybe 150 and then the original price i mean the original quantity we can say maybe we have maybe 500 okay so you can come and put maybe some details and then submit so you have this single unit of what of ice cream so we are going to see if this one if we create a record if this current quantity is going to reduce uh so we shall just simply come here to stock records and then come and create a new record and then after uh -huh, let's say, say uh ice cream test ice cream this one there are 500 pieces let me say maybe it's a sale and then maybe we can say uh we have done what we can say maybe uh, today's sales and then you can say maybe you have sold maybe uh, 50 and then I submit so in the submit you can see uh, let's come here to the what to the stock items you can see 
the current quantity is now what is now 400 what 450 it was originally uh, 500 so you can see it is working and then if you come at subcategory um, you see this ice cream we have 450 so it is uh, working okay it is working so we can go ahead and create another test and maybe try to sell 150 pieces of ice cream I say maybe sell 150 uh, maybe some test say 150 submit so if you come here to the stock items you can see available quantities we're having 300 if we come here to stock subcategories you can see available quantity we're having 300 pieces okay so that is uh, working properly uh, that is that is okay now uh, so the only thing that is uh, remaining is the updating of uh, profits okay how much profits have we made okay so because here is supposed to show expected profit it is here and then the profits and i think that is the only thing that is what that is remaining okay the and profits all right so this one can be calculated by calculating the sales so we can say maybe only the the, the profits shall be calculated from sales and then the rest will be maybe a loss <laughs> i i think we will need a, a column of a loss okay maybe you can cut it loss by by subtracting the profits from the expected price i mean from the expected sales all right so you can see the only column that is not populating is this column of profits and so profit and will be cut from sales so this column is where it is on uh, subcategories okay so subcategories you shall go to subcategory 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 uh, what is subcategory? Subcategory, it is here, the class. So you see, we, we left this profit and we left it. So we are going to put it where? We are going to put it uh, in where? In update self here. Okay, in update self, it's where we are going to put it. So how can you calculate the profit and? So the profit and is going to be the total sales. Of this particular item uh, I mean the total quantity sold of this particular item time moves the total selling price I mean the selling price okay so that is the the, the profit and okay so it's the, the category the, the I mean the the sales so we're in this subcategory right in subcategory subcategory so we're going to get total sales okay so i'm going to get total sales let us first come back so this is a stock record we are having here uh the selling price and then the total sales so total sales was uh, a, a multiplication of quantity times the selling price and then we got the total sales okay so to get the total sale of this subcategory equals to uh, stock item uh -huh. so we get the stock item where so where so we get a uh, stock item where the stock subcategory is equal to this is it stock record not stock item i think stock record okay so let's go ahead and say stock record where okay so the first where be like the first where is where the subcategory equals to this subcategory and the financial period equals to this financial period so in case there is maybe all the records you shall not look at them and then sum the total sales so this is how you can get the what the total sales of this subcategory 
okay then we go ahead and then say profit and is equal to total sales total sales minus total buying price total buying price already we have it here i've already calculated it here okay i think Yep, I think like that we shall be able to tell whether someone is in loss or not. And then we do what? Go ahead and save. Yep, I think that is okay. So profit equals to. So I let me come back how I've cut the profit. So total sales. So we get the total sales of this particular category, all of them. You know we have this column called total sale this one who are saving the total sales okay which was generated from the quantity times the selling price okay minus the total buying price of items in this category and the total buying price of item this category we have already calculated it up here okay in update self okay and then we can tell whether you're in loss or not like this all right, so by doing like this, shall be able to know uh, the profits done or the profits made. All right, so I think that's okay. So let us go ahead and try to now. Uh, so that is for the subcategory. I think we shall also need to do for the categories. Yeah, for the categories. I think I think I think uh, the way how we have calculated is not that normal because what is going to be doing it's going to be saying that every time is in loss as long as uh, as long as as long as the sales have not been been completed okay so maybe what we can do here we can get the profits sell okay so once you sell then you can count that one as what as a profit okay so maybe we should get the the profits per sale because if we do it like this then it means that um, it's going to be getting the wrong uh, values so what you're going to do maybe you're going to add here the profit column so we should be able to do what to calculate uh, each column per sale so in case it is a sale then we shall go ahead and calculate as what as uh, a profit all right so and then here we'll just be getting the sum of of profit per record that one will help us not to to keep in negatives because if you do it this way it means that the the records are always going to be negative as long as the stocks are still what are still there so let's add one more column here on stock rec on stock out record uh, of profit okay profit so let's go to our important commands and then you guys i hope you're hearing me because i've not disconnected yes i'm disconnected all right so let's go to our stock out records So in this table, we're going to add one more column. So we shall be determining the profit per what? Per record. Yeah, that will help us. All right. So we would add column maybe. So we come here and say migration, great migration. Add profit. Column to stock records like this okay so let's open the second terminal and we run that one okay so we come here to this and add one more column to each cell okay and then say uh, float profit okay so by default it can be zero okay profit by default can be zero okay so maybe we can keep 
integers or null skip integers all right so the profit that is going to be the profit so let's go back to our stock record okay so let's go ahead and calculate profit So how shall get profit? So profit is equal to be total sales, total sale minus buying price. You get it, eh? Times the quantity. Okay. So I repeat, profit equals to total sale, which is here, minus the stock item buying price okay times the quantity that you have sold i think that we shall be able to do what to get the total profit mm -hmm. so that is how we shall get the total profit now coming back to the stock subcategory profit shall be the sum of like this like this here so i can just come and put this one here so profit is going to be just the sum of this uh -huh. so we can say if we can say if it's not a sale so there are some things that uh, we can know whether it is a sale or a loss so if you see here on the stock item i mean on the stock record controller stock record controller we have type of what if we have type of uh, of what of these ones okay so now after we've got the profit here so we make sure that the profit is is, is positive So to make sure that the profit is positive, we just simply say ABS like this. Then it will give us the positive profit, okay? Now we're going to determine whether it is a loss or profit depending on these what? On these types, okay? So we can just simply say if the type is, is a what? Is a cell, okay? If the type is a cell, then... Uh, Profit is going to be positive. So you just simply say ABS and then this one will make sure that it's positive, okay? Then else profit equals to we make sure it is negative. So it is a loss. Okay. Minus one the profit I think this one should be All right I'm trying to think here so if it is a cell, mm -hmm. if it is a cell, okay, or if it is a cell or internal use, then we shall count that one as what? As a positive. All right, I think we may not even do this from here. We can do it from up. Do
right so if if it is a cell or it is an internal use then you can consider that as a what as a positive get it eh? you can consider that one as a positive so we put here abs right let me i know it is it has already been calculated here so if it is a it is if it is a uh, internal use maybe we have used it or we have uh, sold so that's going to be a positive so you put here abs and make sure it is what it is positive and then maybe that's when you shall also go ahead and calculate the profit okay actually the profit like that which is equal to the profit of total selling price minus total buying price all right so if if it is not then we make sure that it might play it and make it a what a negative so total sales going to be zero and then the profit done is going to be zero okay I think that's okay so the profit is no profit or maybe you can make it a loss instead but okay let's make it like there's no profit done and also there is no sales done the sales is zero and in case it is not one of these then it is uh the total sales is zero and the profits are zero i think that is okay yep. so you can think <laughs> deeply and see how you can do much more logic on that so we shall only calculate profit if there is a what if it is either a sale or it is used internally that's when you shall do what calculate the profit and then also remember to update the what the stock category here and make sure that you sum up these to be the profits all right so the stock subcategory do they also have profit and uh, let's go ahead and see Stock subcategory, I mean stock category. Stock category which is here. Okay, stock category. Let's go to it, press quarter and click on it. So it is here. Uh -huh. So it also has profit and I think the profit and is also calculated by the same way. Uh, since uh, the stock record has a what? Has a category. So you can just go ahead and say where uh, the stock category ID is equal to this. And then you say in this particular financial year. And then you say profit and I think that's what the name you used. Profit and is equal to the total profit of the stock record that have been created. Yeah, I think that is okay. Only that we need to call also this on update. So we come here to stock subcategory. This self. Okay. So maybe also need to call uh, this update self of category. Where are we calling it? We are not calling it anywhere. We need to call it uh, when the store category changes. Okay. So we can come here and add up updated hooks. Okay. All right, stock item. This one can cause problem. I remove it. I remove it. Let me come here to stock record. Stock record controller. I mean stock record model. 
and then we come to the let's come to the created so let's put here created remove this created we're going to get the category and subcategory and call call them to update themselves stock item there it is and then it calls the subcategories Call the stock subcategory and call it to update itself like this and then also maybe we can call the stock category and call it to update itself put it here i think that's okay so let's try out go ahead and create have not migrated there's an issue with our migration big integer not big increment I migrate yeah, it has migrated. Can go ahead and try again. Stock records we don't have financial period ID. Let's go ahead and add it because it's very important. We forgot to add it in stock records. Add so you run that and then you go ahead and add it.
and we migrate okay so let's go ahead and try and add submit financial period doesn't have default value okay you can come and add it here stock record so let's get the active financial period we can get it from uh, here stock item have something like this so you can just come and copy this so financial period equals to util that get and then you get maybe stock item and you put it here since everything has a company id so you get here the company id and then you get the active financial record period id and then add it there okay like this and i think everything should be okay now everything is all right okay so if you come here to subcategories you can see the profits have been increased and also the categories the profit has been and all right yeah that is great that is great so let's uh start our next lecture and uh finalize uh this module and finalize the tables and also maybe putting the filters as well as doing something on the what on the dashboard